Hello and welcome to another episode of Dire Times. I'm your host, David Dyer, and today we take a little bit of a step back from survival and we look into primitive cultures and how they didn't survive in the woods, but how they lived there. And now part of living is passing on stories and lessons uh, and ideas, most commonly done through music. So today we're going to take a look at the Native American hand drum, how it's made, some of the materials in the process, and kind of walk you through a little bit of that and put a little bit of a modern spin with a local artist. So let's go check that out. Here I have all the tools and the materials I'm going to need to construct a native hand drum. But the one thing that I personally don't have is rhythm, and that's why I invited Sasha Colette to join me in making this drum. Yeah, and I appreciate it. I'm pretty excited to do so. I know uh, throughout my life, since I was about six years old, I've been singing, playing, traveling around. Uh, I've messed with guitar, banjo, and I do a lot of acapella songs in my shows. Um, so I'm excited to incorporate this, especially with the fact it's uh, handmade. I write all my tunes, you know, and it's one thing I like to call them. Uh, I, I made these by hand, you know, I handmade them, you know, so that's kind of cool to be able to tie that in. I handmade my drum, you know. So if we take a look at where our raw materials for our drum head come from, this is a raw deer hide that was actually on a deer in November. Uh, if we open it up here, you can see it's been wet salted, which is just part of a process for actually making buckskin uh, or preserving a hide. Um, this is actually a piece of buckskin from our, my buckskin weekend workshop class, which you can click here and check out. So some of the first stages of this is actually what we're after here. And more or less, we're going to scrape off that meat. We're going to soak this hide until the hair slips and then let it dry out, which is going to produce our raw hide. And that is uh, the hide layer as well as the grain layer of our drum head, which is going to make it very strong. And then once you have the raw hide, you'll notice it's kind of like parchment paper. So it's really brittle and uh, you got to be careful how you fold it up because it'll actually crack. So what we're going to do is, uh, what I've already done is I've actually soaked this overnight. Uh, and you can see it just becomes really supple and very, very tough uh, to stretch, rip, or tear. Uh, so we'll stretch this over a wood frame, which we'll take a look at here in a second. And uh, that's what will be our drum head. And then the same rawhide material is actually uh, what we make our lace out of as well. So as these things dry over the frame, it's going to pull it really tight. And that's what's going to give you the voice of your drum. So let's take a look at that frame and uh, start putting this thing together. All right. Uh, this is the drum hoop. Uh, these are commonly made out of uh, birch, uh, cedar, uh, any kind of bendable wood. And uh, there's a, two different ways that you can make these. You can either uh, split uh, like a rail off and then bend it around a tree after it's soaked in the water for a while. Or you can actually take a section of a tree and burn it out like you would a canoe or a, a burnt bowl or something like that. And then you just sand it down with either rocks or you know, whatever you have naturally occurring will do that. So uh, we actually purchased this one because uh, it was a little easier to make happen. Uh, and you can actually buy these drum kits from various places online that are, you know, the raw materials, but you still have to put it together yourself. So let's actually get started. We have our drum hoop, we have our rawhide lace, and then we have our drum head, which I just pulled, as you can see, out of the water. I'm going to hand that to you. Thank you. So at this point, we just want to dry this off a little bit we don't want to uh, you know use it while it's totally wet but the whole process is going to be drying so we really don't want to take too much time so we're going to just lay it on a towel like this and uh, spread it out and then just kind of roll it up in the towel and just dab it so we're not we're just trying to take off that excess water just like that and you're good that's all that's all you need as we said earlier there's the grain side and then there's the membrane side, and they're pretty easy to tell apart. You can see the difference yeah. there between the two. So we, the, the drum surface, the actual surface we beat on, we actually want to be the grain. So that's going to be down. Um, so we're going to split this into um, sections, much like a pizza, you know, if you're cutting up a pizza. Um, with a 15 inch drum head, uh, you can do 16 sets of two holes or 12 sets of holes. And what we're going to do is we're going to do 12 sets of holes. So for 12 sets of holes, we need 14 feet of lace, where if we were doing the 16 sets, we would actually need 21 feet of lace, 22 feet of lace, somewhere in there. So at this point, I actually have a pattern uh, that I make and cut out my drum heads from. And I already have on here these little tick marks. So if we lay that on there and center it up, I and mean, then just go along and mark all of your 
do a line. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to come back once you get all this, and we're going to put a hole on either side of it. We're going to punch a hole on either side. Now, one of the really interesting things um, that uh, Native Americans did while making a drum is they were very conscious that this was a, once a living animal, and just like the hoop was a, once a living tree. So this has the ability to absorb the energy that you're feeling. So what they would do is um, they would kind of say a prayer while they did this. They would uh, think you know, positive things and good thoughts uh, because they believed that the drum itself would take on the way you're feeling now. So however you feel is going to go into the drum. It's really important, you know, as we go through this process to, you know, consider that and to, to you know, you know, kind of put those good intentions, those good energy, those good thoughts into the drum. So just something to keep in mind while we do this. Once we have our drum head just kind of reasonably uh, toweled off and our marks for where we need to punch our holes, uh, there's two different ways you can do that. You can either take a leather punch and punch them, which is what I prefer to do, or you can take an awl and a hammer and punch them in that way. Um, it doesn't really make any difference how you do it. It's entirely up to you, uh, but I prefer the punch. So what we have here is we actually have uh, 12 marks around, and we're gonna put a punch on either side of each mark, so 12 sets of holes, and we'll show you how those work exactly here in just a second. So go ahead and punch those in. And what she's doing, she's gonna do that, and she's gonna do about a finger's width from the outside of the drum, and about a finger's width apart. Okay, so we have our 12 sets of holes. So at this point, we're gonna do some prep work for our lace. Now the lace itself, um, when you can either cut it out, so like you can actually do like a piece of rawhide and just kind of cut. Um, what's really neat is if you pull this, you'll see it stretches a lot. Um, so we can, we can really you know, get more out of this as we pull it. And as we tighten the drum, this is gonna stretch, this is gonna stretch, so there'll be a lot of that. Um, as we go. So to do this, you just want to pick one end or the other, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I've got a pair of scissors here that will work perfect for this. But uh, you just want to cut it into a bit of a point. And this is what you're going to use to thread through your holes. You're going to punch a little bit, like a, like a row of holes, right in the end of this here. And I'll show you why here in just a second. So go ahead and just center them up and punch a bunch of holes in there. Yep, so you're just going to punch like a line of three right there toward the end. Kind of right in that thick part. So what we're going to do at this point is we're going to take our hoop and we're going to center it up on the drum head. So uh, to do that, you just kind of guess at it a little bit. And then you can pick these up and they should just all go just over. Just over. Just over. Just like that. Uh, then we're going to pick any hole, anywhere, it doesn't matter. So roll that just over the drum head. We're gonna go down through the right, up through the left. You can actually grab right here with your hand so you, because you wanna keep the keep it centered. So don't be afraid to really grip it. All right, before you pull too much, go ahead and lace both holes. That way when you pull it, you only pull one time. Now that you've got that through here, do you remember those three little holes that we punched in there? We're gonna find the other end of our lace and we're gonna run that through those holes. So this is going to be our anchor point for the drum. So you can see how I mean, it's, it's, it's in there well. And now we can begin lacing the drum. So we're going to split the drum right down the middle. So you basically find the set of holes so there's a cross from that. And we're going to go down through the right and up through the left. So you're going to put all your lace underneath. You're going to bring that hole up here and you're going to go down through the right and up through the left. I think throughout my life, uh, music has become more pronounced the older I get. And a lot of it is because um, my love for people in general. And it's kind of cool to find new ways to connect with people. And music has always been one that, it, it's always been there for me to connect with someone. And you can connect with anybody with music. You know, there's a, a neutral ground there to start with. Yeah, we, we've laced all the way around our drum, going down through the right, up through the left. And you'll notice this last lace is going to be next to where we started. 
so we pretty, pretty much came back right around the circle. So we can finish that out. Okay, so we've successfully laced our drum, as you can see. Now this is not tight enough to finish, but if you remember how we went underneath every time. So this is our end point, this is our beginning point. So all you have to do is follow where you split the drum and pull tight. Now you, at this point, you also want to keep in mind of where all your edges are. So you get them, you, know, you kind of adjust, you, know, you can kind of roll and adjust the head uh, if you didn't quite get it centered. Uh, and then we'll actually go around and smooth all these edges out once we get them tight. So find your center line and what you want to do so this doesn't slip through your hand, you, you pull and then you grab the other one and then grab the other one. So you keep going down. You see how we're fishing yeah. through and you tighten that up. Throughout my life I've um, been in some plays and that kind of thing and it's always cool to uh, forget about your current situation for a second and just kind of to you know, shoot for the stars for a little bit. You know, it's kind of one of those things hanging in a hammock, you know. It uh, takes your mind off of things for a while and singing a tune about a particular subject or a particular story or something like that, it helps liven you up a little bit, especially when you're entertaining because once you see somebody else is into it, ow, oh, it just pours right out of you and there you are, you know, you're, you're entertaining and that's what music is about and a lot of times is entertaining people who need their minds uh, taken from one subject to a, something a little bit better. You know? All right, so we, this, is, this is pretty tight, this is about you know, where you want it kind of to feel, but as this dries, it's going to pull. It's basically not going to let this, this hide stretch back across, it's going to hold it in place. So at this point, we're ready to make our handle. And uh, what you want to do is you have your, your beginning point here, so you find where you originally split the drum. Now we have 12 sets of holes. So we have, uh, and the way that the, I guess the, the Native Americans looked at this is four directions. So north, south, east, west, and then each of those directions has a male and a female half. So what you do is this is this, if you imagine this north and this south, so male half, female half. So what you want to do is you want to come bring your string back underneath everything and come up just on the right of all of that. Now the really cool thing is when you do that, now pull that string to the center and watch everything clean right up. See how everything just kind of went right into place? So what you want to do since you've done that is you, you have your line that splits, which is what you want to remember. So you're going to wrap six wraps up and with these three. So you're going to go oh, up nope, through here, there you go, and you want to keep this really tight. It's um, going to be a bit of a challenge. And take it. You're, you're, going to, you're going to wrap it underneath right here where you came from, the whole thing. And you want to keep this really tight while you're doing this. You want to pull to the center of the drum. There you go, just like that. Now, you go one more time, you know, six times. So top there and you're just going to pull those in together. So you have to pull it as tight as you can get it. Like, I mean, really snug that up. Alright, so now since you see where our, our string is here, and that one right there, you know what a half hitch is? No. Alright, so I'll demonstrate the first one and you can do the next one. Okay. So when this is good and tight like that, you're going to wrap your string under one more time. Let me see if we can lay this out so it looks a little easier. You're going to bring it down and around. See how I'm just making a loop yeah. with the string there, or the rail and I'm going to pull it as tight as I can down against that, just like that. So it locks that handle in place. So basically, you're going to have this much direction this way, this way, and this way, and that's going to make your handle. Now, well, now that everything's locked into place, I like to take this opportunity to smooth all of these edges out. And smooth that out, and that way when it pulls tight, it, there won't be any edges to catch on it. Oops. Yeah, just, just work them flat, as flat as you can get them. And then just roll that extra height over the top of the drum to the inside. Now, I also want to point out at this point too, you don't want to beat on your drum head, you don't want to push on your drum head at all, because that's going to stretch it when you don't want to stretch it. So for the next 24 hours while this is drying, you know, you want to avoid contact with pressing on the, the head itself. So let's flip that back over and finish your hand. So we have north finished, and you can see your three. So we're gonna we're gonna bring this right down to these right here. So we're gonna just keep going around. So go underneath, okay. pick up your next three, 
and you make sure you keep it really tight the whole process and run up six loops. Same, same thing, pull it tight and do your half hitch. Over or under? Over. And you're going to pull it right back up through the next one. Yep. And you're going to pull it as tight as you can on top of that. Just like that. Beautiful. You're going to pick up the next three. Same thing. From underneath? From underneath. Now, on this, the, the, the very last one, I like to bury it with two. Okay. Because that, if that not, you know, comes loose, then you're in real trouble. So that is your drum. And all nice and nice. You a beautiful pattern in there. And uh, as this dries, uh, it's going to tighten right up. So you can continue now if you want to smooth the outside edges. So we have our handle made. And like I said, you can just continue to work these edges over, uh, which is going to, you know, help with... Uh, you know, just how nice the drum looks uh, once it finishes drying. It's going to help those pull tight. Same thing with around your edges. Um, and this is your drum. Now, uh, for the next 24 hours, you're not going to want to press down on this at all. The best, uh, the best place to put it while it dries is someplace cool, uh, potentially, you know, even cold, uh, so the moisture leaves it slowly, because if it leaves it quickly, it could actually bust the drum head if it's too fast. Um, so we're just going to hang this up in the basement, give it 24 hours, and um, Come back and check it out. Okay. Your drum, man. Thank you. So this is our finished drum. It is a 15-inch deer hide drum. And you can see she did an absolutely beautiful job with it. Uh, has a really nice, deep, rich sound. Uh, which, as you can see, no rhythm whatsoever. I leave that to <laughs> the professionals. Uh, so with that being said, she has a wonderful song called West Virginia Swim. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna play that here in a second. But so, you know, with the spirit of, you know, passing down stories and lessons and things like that, you know, we're going to find any of that in West Virginia Swim? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Uh, the song's kind of capturing the idea of uh, what you do with the summertime when you're um, young and able, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, and like, I, I mean, everybody's had a West Virginia Swim at one point or time in their life. And so. if they haven't, they really should. Yeah. It's a, it's a blast. I'm going to turn this over to you, Thanks. and uh, I'm going to sit back and enjoy. Right. I'm going down the levee.
been a great day here on Dire Times. A huge thanks to Sasha Collette for coming out, you know, making a drum and gracing us with the music from it as well as her music and telling the, a little bit of the story of the culture of the area and, uh, you know, kind of keeping, keeping that spirit alive. Um, tell us a little bit more about like some of your other music. Um, I tend to uh, just, I'm a songwriter by heart, by nature, that's all I've ever messed with. Um, I tend to write a more folksy blues, uh, kind of in the vein of Lyle Lovett and Bruce Springsteen, that kind of thing. Um, and I like to take it out and travel around because it's the people you meet that inspire your stories. So. Absolutely. Well, if you'd like to check out a little bit more of what she has to offer, I'll put the link below. Uh, and what's really cool is West Virginia Swim is not one of those songs uh, that she has up on her page. So you can only catch that if you hit the rewind button. Yeah. So just keep doing that. But um, again, absolute pleasure having you out today. And if you'd like to check out a little bit more of what Dire Times has to offer, you can click here for the Buckskin Weekend Workshop video, uh, which we talked about a little earlier. You can click here for uh, some interesting self-defense type stuff with a taser strike light. I go hand to hand with, <laughs> uh, it was bad, it was really bad. It was good, but it was bad for you, all for you. Uh, and then you can click right there for some additional, uh, just really fun stuff out in the world. We did a, a Tough Mudder, which was just an absolute blast and uh, kind of hit the hills with mud. And, and it was actually in Maysville, Kentucky. So cool. it was, uh, very cool, was, we nearly froze to death, but it was a good time. <laughs> so again, a great pleasure. And thank you all for watching. This was Dire Times. I'm your host, David Dyer, and I'll catch you next time. Hey guys, I've had a great time with Dire Times today, and I hope you've enjoyed uh, yourself also, and hopefully you got a sweet gem out of the day too. Uh, if you're interested in checking out any of my tunes, you can go to ReverbNation.com slash Sasha Coolett. I think you might find a couple that you like pretty well. Uh, and in the meantime, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.